very much for people coming out of your houses and being inside on such a hot day outside to join me on the first ever Naturally You Day. I really appreciate your time. Everyone that's here from the speakers to the exhibitors have all been almost like hand selected. They're people that I've always looked up to or admired or people that I would recommend people go to if they want help with skincare or personal development or business training or whatever it is, all the exhibitors, all the speakers. So, the, and the reason why we're all under one roof is so that the visitors that come here today, you guys that come here today can get some information and inspiration and motivation to continue your journey into natural health. A lot of us are already on a journey to natural health, but sometimes we, you know, hit stumbling blocks and we need a bit of a push and a bit of some encouragement. So everything that's here today is there to do that, is to give you that little push, give you that bit of encouragement to help you on your journey to natural health. This is the belt system, but it's not about belt, belt, belt. Can you defend yourself? That's what it's about. Defending yourself. That's what you need when to join a martial art for. The belt will come. But I promise you this, you will learn how to defend yourself. It's not an easy system. We train hard. You're going to develop strong arms, a strong core, strong legs. You'll be conditioned, you'll be well coordinated. Your stamina will be good. Your confidence will evolve. So that's what it's about. That's what we're about. There's other things we do, conditioning, meditation, breathing, so many things. Identifying what you, what's the opportunity right now about what you're passionate about? Is there a market for it? 
Is it in growth or decline? Looking at the whole, you know, if you're doing your business here, the UK economy, is the business that you're going to start, is it going to be profitable? Maybe not now, but maybe five years' time. You need to take all of these things into consideration and opportunity as well. You know, what opportunity can you tap into? And the threats like your competitors and so forth. So it's doing yourself an own personal spot analysis to say, look, I made some bank farm, this is what I'm really good at, this is what I'm not so good at, this is the opportunity for my passion, and these are the threats. Everybody happy with that? Yeah. Great. Number two, we can link to my business many years ago. Professional advice. Very important that you see professional advice. Stop dreaming and start today. I hope you've enjoyed today's session. She gets called onto stages where she is the only black woman amongst like 10 old white foggy guys, you know, who've been around for ages. She is the business. Seriously, if you want a business coach who's not gonna massage your ego, she's not gonna tell you what you wanna hear, she's gonna pick holes in your business plan, she's gonna tell you what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong so you can be successful, that's Mavis. Because she's built up her business to be successful. She's got a team of people under her. She's not a one person, one man job. She's got a team of people under her and she is building that team up progressively. My brother's worked with her, I've worked with her. There's loads of people that have worked with her. I, I can 100% vouch for the effectiveness of the work that she does. So I just personally, I would like to give you a round of applause for my head of course. that I'd like to bring up to the stage, the stage, is someone who I've known for over 20 years now. Um, he is an expert in functional exercise and he's going to be speaking to you today about how to train to not just look good, but how to train to feel good. His name is Warren Williams, let's give him a nice warm round of applause up to the front. Well, I'm going to show you my presentation is how looking good can sometimes make you feel bad. It's all about how you feel, not necessarily how you look. So, we just go to the next page. So, this is the typical fitness model. And when I say fitness model, what I mean is most men train their upper body. Girls know about that because they've got the tiny little legs, and big upper body, the heat man kind of shape. Even though they're trying to try and look good to impress women, the women are telling them, um, you can look at your legs a little bit, it might actually look a little bit better. But it's still the wrong thing because they're top heavy. <coughs> <laughs> so this is typical. They train the front of their body. They train to get a six pack. They train the chest and the arms. And what that does is it creates a muscle imbalance because what we, do, what we say is they have a six pack but with a naked spine. So they look good in the front but nothing under that. Yeah? And the typical woman, their goal is to become micro thin because of media attention. But if you look at functionality, if you were to just look at sport itself, a footballer, a tennis player, in terms of males, they're all around 10, 12 stone. They're not training to be a specific weight. They're not saying, right, in order for me to play tennis, I've got to be 12 stone. They're just playing. And by playing, they are a specific weight. They're all the same weight. And that's the functional weight for you to be good at any sport. The same with any woman. If you look at women in sport, they're typically around a size 10 because that's what's functional for sport and movement. They're not training to say, right, I want to be a size zero while I'm a goalkeeper. Yeah? So the goal is to be functional, not to specifically train for a look. Good. If you look at um, pole vaulters, pole vaulters look fantastic. But they don't do pole vault to look good. And the byproducts of being functional, they look good. Yeah? Bodybuilders, no functionality, they're disgusting, <laughs> functioning, yeah? they're just 
all over the place. So if you're trying to look, if you're trying to feel good, you're going to look good anyway. Yeah. Hopefully, you will go and do something smarter, not harder. <laughs> Uh, I decided I wanted to go natural without actually chopping all my hair off and starting from scratch. If I had to do that, to be honest with you, I don't think I would have done it. I don't, you know, too much of a big jump for me to have on having hair down to about here. In the purple jumper, that's even more permanent. The idea of chopping all that off and starting from scratch, I would never have done it. So the idea of trying to grow my hair without actually chopping it off and just trimming it slowly, that's what I decided to do. And as I said, I'm three months, three years, seven months in. I've still got a few edges on, and people say, no, why don't you chop it off? Because I'm on a challenge. I want to get right to that point. Um, and therefore, I reckon by Christmas, the little bit of perm I've got left will probably been trimmed off. Okay, so talking about some of the facts and fiction within the Afro hair industry. Natural versus relaxer. Now that there's this big, natural movement going on, and there is a big natural movement, and why not indeed? But there does seem to be this, also this pressure on people who are not natural to go natural. And I think it's a choice you've got to make yourself. And again, looking at, can I just ask in here, who's had a relaxer in their life? The majority of us. Anybody still got a relaxer? Okay, no, no, don't. <laughs> it's fine, you know, it's about good hair care. And that's what I'm about. I'm not about saying you've got to get natural, but you shouldn't wear a weave. I think it's about choice. I think we're big people. We can make the choices that we want to make. But whatever choice you do, it's about practicing it in a very ethical way, practicing it in a healthy way, practicing it in a way that's not going to damage your own hair. And all these different hair styles can be done if done in a, in a very, you know, in a way that is conscious of your natural hair. Be careful. Look back at what they've done, their history, look at their credentials. The hair industry is unregulated. Even your trichologist, your hair expert, in a clinic, if it looks too good to be true, it probably is too good to be true. So just be conscious of what you're watching, what people are saying, why are they saying it, does it make sense? And uh, I hope that was some help to you. And we are students, teachers of the Master Teacher. And we get our information from him through our um, through his books and that's the sort of one that we have that we study in order to gain our information. Today we're here to give you a, a presentation on how tones and frequencies affect our health. And we're going to start off with a few definitions. First of all, what is vibration? Vibration is movement uh, to and fro. It can be rapid movement to or fro or oscillation. So everything vibrates. And we in ourselves, in our own body, have our own vibration, have our own states, if you like. We have our solid, in terms of bone, we have our liquid, blood, and we have our gas, which is our brain. It's the quartz crystal, which is formed deep within the earth, um, through uh, silicon dioxide molecules vibrating together, it's all sort of attracting each other. And basically, what, um, when given a certain stimulus, this crystal will vibrate, chant, or sing, and we can receive that energy and convert it into information. And vice versa, the crystal can read us and store information. So we we sort of um, know it as nature's USB in a sense. We often hear motivational speakers say, visualise your goal. And why do they say that? Because they want you to see something that can manifest. So you can, you can see by that sort of thing that you can take a thought and eventually make it into reality. I'm afraid guys, we're going to have to wrap up one more time. A round of applause. We have a gentleman who's about to grace us with his presence. His name is, don't run, don't run away Robert. His name is Robert. He's a master gardener and he will be talking to us about how we can grow our own food. Right of course for that. A lot of people think things are hard to grow. And also when they see this on the back, master gardener, I'm no master gardener. I'm no master gardener. I don't know if I've been properly grown. But I do know I'm going to go for cabbage and whatever. 
after growing all the local vegetables, we could grow here, you know, tomatoes and all those things like that. I decided to go, let's move it a bit further, but we have to color loop. And every time I go to Jamaica, I just want things back. <laughs> Not wheat. <laughs> 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 I've got, I've got an Aki tree at home, I've got um, Koko, Dashi, and all those kind of things I take, I even um, not make Because where I come from, um, my grandfather on the other side of the family, we've got a big acre, my uncle's there growing everything, so when I go down the other side, I raid it all and take all the seeds. Okay. So I have them all here. So I start to grow them now, and I have a project um, called Back to Earth, called the farm, where I do, they call it exotic. Chow chow, it's got bunny pepper, colour, all these things. So they think I'm a great exotic garden grower. I had to send these guys. These guys here, they've got a big place in um, Coventry called um, Garden Organic, where this doctor Anton, his name is, he grows it. He has to call me, and I've showed him how to grow chow chow. So we're growing chow chow now. So it's not difficult. It's very easy. Now, if you've got a space in your garden. Some people say I've got no room. Yeah. I've got no space to plant it. But I can show you after this, you can go and look where I am and I can show I've got things and tile it. And I've got a picture up there to show you. So you can go things almost anywhere. Right? Now the next thing that people keep saying is too expensive, I can't afford it. But let me tell you something. If I don't bring back the, the Scotch bonnet pepper from Jamaica, you all go shopping and buy your Scotch bonnet, don't even cook it. You all cook with Scotch bonnet, yeah. most of you anyway. When I cook with scotch bonnet, if the scotch bonnet is nice, the seeds is there. You cut the seeds there. You just leave it there to dry. Yeah. The old girl said, we've got nothing to plant in. How I germinate my seed in the beginning, when I was very poor. Um, you know the Chinese takeaway things you have? Mm -hmm. Little things, but you have a Chinese with a lid on? Mm -hmm. All you've got to do with that is put some fine compost in it. And your, compost, your, your scotch bonnet seed that you dried from two months ago, sprinkling on top, a little bit of compost on top of that, and moist it. Put the lid back on it, give way the next one, scotch bonnet's coming up. Oh. This is a scotch bonnet plant, but I bought a small one, but my ones are big enough now with papers on, but I just bought, a pop, I bought this small one. This is a scotch bonnet plant, growing the same way I've told you. These were picked this morning from my project. These are sweet peas. Now, if you don't believe that they taste different from when you grow it, uh, when you want to taste, eat one of my peas. And that's Becky never eaten any peas like this. Anybody want one? Yeah. My name's Danae Haru, and yeah, I'm so happy to be here. At least I'm in Japan. I've made it for a long time. I truly believe in uh, what she's doing and the power of healing and um, the importance of healing and of healing through different media, whether it's through your health, through the way that you think, um, diet, exercise, and also as an artist, I believe in healing through music, healing through creativity, and I do various forms of um, art. I'm a multidisciplinary artist. I don't know when it happened, but it did. I lost my down the road I found myself in a place of confusion yeah where I couldn't tell the thoughts of others from my own I feel like I had lost my identity and I had given up my throne. They just wanted me to categorize me so I would then despise me, but they can't divide me into pieces. I am complete, and the truth is, I'm the original. And I can say more in the to say hotel for what and daddy Cause it's all me. Well my answer
ancestors are telling me to give this young lady another big round of applause. <laughs> so, Lamela, Kendall, slice of reality. We always kind of want to give you the best by using traditional recipes that have been passed down through the generations. So the products in particular that you're going to see today on my store are from my grandmother's village. And she died as a grandmother in 2015. So, oh, wow. Yeah. So Moringa tends to basically treat any, any kind of ailments that people are experiencing from cancer to diabetes to hair loss to weight loss to weight gain you name it it does it and I, I particularly remember a story with my grandma and she's quite old mm -hmm. and would we'll say just follow me without talking I'm following this woman for ages and we'll finally get to the tree and she's like you have to stop with that and I'm like but you say that all the time and I was constantly drinking Moringa mm -hmm. and it's only when you know Europeans found Moringa and they started doing tests they found that it actually treats everything and I thought oh no wonder why grandma kept on sending me to the Moringa mm -hmm. and not only should you take care of the outer being it's also important to take care of the inner side of yourself so your body is important too your well-being is important so make sure you take things like the Moringa or the Baba that we have today we have been given antibiotics, anti-inflammatories, antidepressants, all that all these anti-things are anti-anti-anti. What are they doing to your system? They're anti-life. Flavonoids, these kind of healing compounds within cinnamon, within all these things like cumin, all the spices actually heal. There's no spice from bay leaves to thyme to rosemary, they're all gonna spend it. our ancestors putting them together in our foods for a certain purpose. Okay? They're not just there by accident. What we want to say is that. At the same time, today we're seeing a lot of hormone-related cancers, hormone-related problems. What you're finding is that every part of our body is producing chemicals. Every time you think a thought, your body produces a chemical. Goes into your bloodstream, goes into your nervous system. Now, the more people think negative thoughts, the more negative chemicals they create. Meaning that you can create negative medicine. Your body's producing medicine all the time. That's why you produce endorphins as well. They make you feel happy, feel good, you know? That's when you're having positive thoughts. What you find that this product can heal a wide variety of conditions from diabetes to AIDS to asthma, people with period pain, people with all kinds of lupus, heart disease. Why does it do all those diseases? Because it works with the very core of your system. If you can empower your healing power, you can heal anything. That's what Dr. Sally has discovered over 10, 20 years this product has been in use. We've just come back from Ghana, we've launched the product again in Ghana, and it's doing very well in Ghana because people are now appreciating what I call your body's ability to heal itself. And you find that a lot of the things that we are missing from our food, even for general health, there's nothing wrong with you. Stephen, once again, thank you so much. For
is my first ever live event. I've been to a lot of events and spoken and participated, but this is the first event that I've ever put on. And like I said at the beginning, the reason, the reason, one of the main reasons why I put this event on was because I've been to events before or listened to people's seminars or read books and I've, there's pieces of information that work here and other pieces that work here and I wanted to try and bring together under one roof all of the speakers, the experts, the products, the services that I recommend to people when they're on their journey to natural health. There's something that you can get from every single person in here and to be honest, even if you guys start speaking to each other as guests, because you all came here for a reason, which means you're all already connected somehow. Does that make sense? Yes. And that connection and that community that can be created, the same way Day of the Goddess created a community, the same way Adornment created a community, the same way Natural November created a community, we can create, the same way the United Moroccan Nation created a community, the same way Nation of Islam created a community. Whether we agree with the principles or not, they all created a community and with that common unity magnificent things can happen does that, does that make sense yes. and we know that's true we can move mountains and we can change ourselves just by changing our mind and uniting so thank you so much for coming today Take care. my nephew he's 15 years old he wrote a book on the five most entrepreneurial rap stars, current rap stars. He wrote a book on it, a 6,000 word book. Ooh. He put it on Amazon and overnight, without any massive marketing push, it got to number one. And it also got to number 10 in another category and number 21 in another category Ooh. overnight. Ooh. Okay. Ooh.